We're here at AirVenture Oshkosh. About the middle of the week now, going along pretty good. Weather's still shining on us. I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm going to talk with John McBean. He is the man behind Kit Fox. And if you don't know Kit Fox, you've been off planet too long and need to return to Mother Earth because you have airplanes, well, all over the U.S., but pretty much all over the world. Give us a little summary about the airplane to start with, John. Well, the Kit Fox was introduced in 1984 here at Oshkosh, and um, we've got them in 42 different countries and over 6,000 kits sold worldwide. 6,000 kits, so one of the big success stories in light aviation has been the Kit Fox. And the Kit Fox has always been a short field kind of airplane with a rather dashing performance for the category and so forth. Now you got something new, and we're gonna talk about what it's new, but why did you even do this? You, people well, ask you stuff, I understand. We've always had customers talk to us about wanting to be able to take off out of their backyard or their long driveway or things like that, which, which was just a little bit shorter than what we'd really be comfortable selling our current model into um, for the average guy. So the intent was to give them the opportunity to have half the takeoff distance, half the landing distance of our current model um, at a minimum. Half. Okay, half. that's a pretty significant yeah. improvement. Yeah. In an airplane that was already not a long running airplane. Absolutely. Around, so. Absolutely. Okay, continue on please. And um, so, so that target, we said, well, let's see if we can do this and hit the takeoff landing distances of more than half. Um, than our current model, or less, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> right. Less than more than half, I guess, <laughs> how you want to word that. Um, and still maintain a reasonable cruise. So we actually get about a 98 mile an hour true airspeed cruise on this airplane as equipped with the 29 inch tires and everything else. Uh, typically, when you make an airplane a short takeoff and landing, often abbreviated as stall, uh, that you're, you're going to give up some stuff. In order to get off the ground that quickly, you're going to lose a lot of top end and not that it's going to be a bad airplane, but it's going to be a different airplane. And you're trying to keep some of the qualities of the Kit Fox that everybody knows so well and add in the stole. Well, what was very important to us is to make sure that it was retrofitable into the fleet. Ah, okay. So this is a. So, so this wing. I've already got a Kit Fox, a Series 7. Does it have to be a Series 7? Five through seven. Five through seven. Okay, yep. well, that's a lot of your airplanes then. Yes, it is. So if I already have one of those, I can go, hey, yeah, I've always wanted that. I could do that, huh? Well, you know, we have the Tri Gear situation where we can change the gear position right, from tailwheel right. to tri-gear at any time, now you can change your wing at any time. Jeez, it's a, a pretty versatile airplane that you've got then. So tell us a little bit more specific now. Uh, in, in the background of the camera here, we've got the, the, the kit box wing that everybody knows so well. And, and you, from here, I hope the camera can see it, but it's, it's got a certain shape to it that you can see pretty easily. This one looks different. Tell me what you've done that's different about this wing, John. Well, two things that we did is one, it went to a little bit thicker uh, uh, thicker wing okay. um, and a longer cord. More cord, too. Okay. Yeah, a little bit longer cord. Uh, but we looked at the wing tip and said, why do we need a wing tip? Let's eliminate the wing tip. So the last several inches of the wing, instead of being a, a conventional wing tip, we actually made it airfoil shaped. So yeah, it's normally here this would start wing. to curve around and taper Correct. and so forth. And Correct. you just you bought some more wing area basically. Exactly. So exactly. you get a little more, and then you just put, the, this is often called a fence out here. That's correct. Or a tip plate, some people I've heard call it, but yep. you're calling it a fence, okay. Correct. And um, and the combination of that, the, this is a, this is, I think you told me this is a riblet airfoil? It is a riblet airfoil. Okay, we don't need the numbers, yep. but uh, that's a that's a well-recognized uh, construction of wings. Absolutely. That's also been around a long time, as has been the conventional kit box wing. Cool, so they can add this to it and, uh, and gain a whole new perspective on their flying. So give me some numbers. The Kit Fox take, typical takeoff run by a typical pilot on a typical day, that kind of thing, and compare that to this to put some real numbers on it. Well, um, to give you an idea, we, we're typically in the 240 to 300 range on takeoff and feet landing. Feet of roll. Uh, feet of roll. Okay. Um, and, and that's for an average pilot um, that's working it. And, and you know, a, a, I would say average pilot that's proficient. Um, on the takeoff, the landing will be a little bit different. Um, this one will literally get in and under half that. We're down to 100 feet takeoff. Um, uh, where our stall speed. We, now, this is with the same kind of engine and prop, so you didn't change that part of it? Ironically more? enough, I'll give you a little semantics. Okay. Um, we, our, our goal was 100 foot takeoff, 100 foot landing, 100 mile an hour cruise <laughs> on a stock 100 horse. Is that right? Okay. So. And the engine we put in this airplane has now 1600 hours. It's not a new 100 wow. horse. So it's a 1600 hour Rotax 912 ULS and we're actually able to achieve those numbers. Wow. Well, you got some new gear too, I think, that's part of this overall package. Why don't we go over there and have a look at that? Certainly. Now, you've had big tires before, so that's not entirely new, but tell us what else you've achieved with this in addition to the tire, John. Well, with the wing, we ended up with a 31-mile-an-hour power-off stall. 
back. 31. Okay. 31. Wow. And a lot of people... Mile an hour, too, not knots. So correct. that's uh, 28 knots or something. That's very slow. Correct. And, and because of that, people are going to bring them in, they're going to slap them down hard. And part of that is also to get the angle of attack on it for the short takeoff. So we needed to make a little bit taller gear and get taller tires um, and all that. So we developed the gear, which you'll probably recognize this gear if you think back to 2010 on an airplane that we had the radial on. Oh, so yeah. and it okay. had a taller right. gear for the for the prop that right. we had because you had, you had to have a you had, had to, to bring it up gear. for that prop. But right. it had the 606 <laughs> wheels. Uh, okay. Okay. So we made the taller gear, put the 29 inch tires on there, and it will work with the smaller tires as well. It will. Okay. And then we worked with uh, TK1 Racing and developed the Shock Monster. Gear. Yeah, that's that's quite an arrangement down there. What all does that do for you? Well, it, it's basically um, a compression type setup that works very similar to what you see in a lot of the a lot of the cub style airplanes that okay. are out there. And what it does is it's dampening, it's nitrogen filled. Okay. And so it dampens the ride very well and kind of like shock absorbers on a car where you'll get independent suspension. So when you get on rough terrain, each wheels operate independently rather than a spring steel type gear where the wings are rocky. Yeah, one transmits to the other yep. in those things. In Here those you're models. kind of like independent suspension on a car. Though. Absolutely. Okay. So they're operating independently. Um, and and dual, dual shock struts, I see. We went with the dual stru shock struts for a couple of reasons. One, the dynamics of how it comes together. The other one is you can have a complete failure of one strut uh, okay. and not have a, have a catastrophic area in the gear when you have to, when you have to land. Yeah, it's full of fluids and nitrogen. You know, there's a possibility you're going to whack something or whatever. Absolutely. It'd be, a, a, it'd be an unfortunate situation if Absolutely. you lost one of those guys. And, and, and that was part of keeping with that design. Okay. Well, very cool. Now. Is this also a retrofitable thing, as you told us about the wing, John? It is. Okay, so if you've got an original five, six, seven kit box, any of those, you can put all this new stuff on. Is Absolutely. That right? That's very cool. Absolutely. Um, now, ironically enough, we, we're going to be asked, and people are going to say it, the Model 4 was probably one of the most popular kit boxes there out there. There were a lot of those. There's thousands of them built. Um, and uh, because of that, will this stuff work on the 4? And the answer is, Yes, but we haven't put it on a four to actually get some of the the, the, the technical aspects of it. Um, Are you gonna work on that? Down. Uh, over time, we will take a look at it. Uh, a lot of that will depend on the demand. If the guys with the fours, which, sure, sure, which have uh, short field capabilities already. Right. Um, uh, yeah, that was a light and small airplane in my yep. mental picture of it that already had a lot of these qualities that you're talking about. Yes. But you know, on the other hand. People with an airplane that's still a good, solid airplane, nothing wrong with it. Here's a way to not dress it up necessarily, but to make it kind of a new airplane. Program. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, it's um, a different mission statement. Yeah, yeah completely different yep. kind of flying. And yeah, if, if you're looking to go fast and far, well, then you're not going to do any of this stuff anyway, because right. that's not what it's about. This is sort of backcountry flying kind right. of thing, right? Right. Well, in our, in our Series 7 aircraft, or in the Super Sport specifically, does very well in the backcountry. It's operating in a flight school, teaching mountain flying and canyon flying and everything else. Paul Lederbrand, yeah, Paul okay, right. So it, it's already a standard, a, a phenomenal performer in that arena, and that has great cruise speeds to go along with it, with cruise speeds of the 120, 123, 124. But well, we've given up about 25 miles an hour to, to accomplish what we've done here. Right, give us, get us in some kind of a range for build time and cost. Well, your typical build time is 1,000 hours build time. That's, that's for the whole see. airplane. Yeah. That's for the whole airplane. That's what we see as an average across the board. Some guys take longer. As you know, the, the home built community can take 10, 15, 20 years to build an airplane right. um, and three lifestyles. So <laughs> that changes frequently. And then we have other guys that really rock and roll and they finish them in three and four months. Uh, but an average we see there, yeah. is, is uh, 1,000 hours for those with a full time job um, and a family in about 18 months okay. is, is average. Um, cost. Total cost, depending on your engine choice and avionics choice, you're usually going to be in about the 50 on up range. So very economical. Yes. Okay, but now let's talk specifically about the wing and the Monster Shock system. Let's say I've got a, let's say I've got a seven already, and it's got a few years on it. I, I want to, I want to make it new in some new way, and I want to do a different kind of flying. What am I going to have to invest to do that in time and money, approximately? To, to date, we have the price we have here at the show is eighty six hundred dollars okay. for the for the Shock Monster gear kit. Okay. Now that gets a little bit confusing because we've had to try to do it for the show for people that are buying new kits as well, not just retrofits. And what that does include, it's the gear, the wheels, the brakes, which are Grove Aircraft wheels and brakes. Okay. And then we also have the ABI thirty two hundred Alaska Bush wheel tail wheel that's included in that package. Oh, ah, okay. That includes the tail wheel that as well. Includes then. the tail wheels. Matches well. up with this. Yeah. Which okay. is going to be a little bit interesting for those that are. Um, 
who's doing a retrofit because they may already have that tailwheel. I see. And so, we think it's important. So some ins and outs of exactly what they've got to buy. Correct. How about the wing part of it? Uh, wing says the same principles. It will it will retrofit on. It is a complete wing. It includes the struts with the fairings and everything else and, and uh, flapper ons. The entire thing, the vortex generators, the you know the fences if you want them, um, everything that's there. If you if, if you want that, I, I believe the price of the show is ninety six fifty or okay. ninety eight fifty. I'm sorry. So then, for a total of roughly speaking about twenty grand, new gear, new wing. You got kind of a new airplane for not that much money extra. Yeah. And how much effort is involved with each of those two things? If I already had the seven built, ready to fly. Now I say, well, I want to put this stuff on. How much time am I going to invest? Well, ironically enough, we, we were talking about that last night. Um, you're going to invest probably a couple hundred hours in building the wing okay. um, and getting it assembled. It does come as a, in a quick build form. Okay. Um, but you're still going to have to mount it to the fuselage and set it and do all the, the specifics for your airframe. Sure. Um, however, once you had it done and completed, and we were talking about this last night, if you set it up right, you could literally change wings in probably half a day. Wow, okay. And you could change from one set of wings so to So you go back and forth. You really could. Okay, that's cool. I you guess really I hadn't could. picked up on that. So yeah. you can have two airplanes. Yeah, you could. For about 20 grand, you get two airplanes. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's a pretty good deal. So. Now, the gear system itself, to change the gear system over, is probably going to take in the neighborhood of um, uh, probably a good day's job to do that. Oh, that's and all part of that is bleeding the brakes. Because ah. you're going to have to pull the seat out, rerun the brake lines, re-bleed the brakes, and all those things. Okay. Well, a lot of great information, John, but uh, people always have more questions. How do we find you on the web? We'll put it up on the screen for folks, so just give us your uh, your Kitfox address. Sure, well, uh, Kitfox located in Homedale, Idaho, uh, uh, which is just outside of Boise. It's uh, The web address is www.kitfoxaircraft.com, and the phone number is 208-337-5111. Excellent. All the information you can get there and uh, speak to John and his staff and get all the details about how you can make your airplane two airplanes. You can get lots more about Kit Fox and all kinds of other airplanes at Affordable Aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for John and joining John McBean and myself here at AirVenture Oshkosh. The Copper State Fly-In has been bringing aviation enthusiasts in the Southwest U.S. together since 1973. This year we are again thrilled to be hosting the Copper State Fly-In at the Buckeye Municipal Airport, KBXK, in conjunction with the Buckeye Air Fair. The dates for the fly-in are February 6 to 9, 2020. We anticipate that the 2020 Copper State fly-in will break all of our previous attendance records. Admission and parking to the 2020 Copper State fly-in and Buckeye Airfare are free, including the two-hour air shows on Saturday and Sunday. So make sure to join us for a weekend of free fun for the entire family. See light sport aircraft, experimental aircraft, ultralights, vintage and military aircraft, as well as action-packed demonstrations. Visit the many educational forums, aircraft displays, youth activities, or one of the over 100 vendors. Copper State Fly-In Inc. is a volunteer-run, non-profit organization dedicated to promoting recreational and general aviation through events, scholarships, and public education. Proceeds from the Copper State Fly-In help support scholarship programs for youth seeking careers in the aerospace industry. We look forward to seeing you, February 6 to 9, 2020, at the Buckeye Municipal Airport, 3000 South Palo Verde Road, Buckeye, Arizona.